Roaring Camp and Big Trees Narrow Gauge Railroad is one of the oldest tourist railroad operations in the United States. Having been founded shortly after the end of steam, it quickly became a popular place to see these old locomotives in operation. From the 8mm and Super 8mm movie cameras of six different rail fans, the early days of Roaring Camp are seen again from 1964 to 1968. Roaring Camp in Big Trees was the vision of F. Norman Clark, a rail fan and businessman who had associations with the founding of Traveltown in Griffith Park, Los Angeles. His vision was to create an immersive historic experience for the general public, complete with a steam railroad and historic town. And with the lease of some property along the Southern Pacific in Felton, California, the Roaring Camp in Big Trees was born. Clark's original plan was to use rod engines for the operation, and he had his eyes set on former Santa Cruz Railway's Jupiter, a three-foot gauge Baldwin 440 that was in Central America. With that engine ultimately going to the Smithsonian and the high construction costs of shallow grades up to the top of Bear Mountain, in 1962, Clark purchased a small two-truck Shea parked under under a coaling trestle in Dixiana, Virginia. Purchase of this engine would allow for tighter curves and steeper grades, and the two-truck Shea arrived in Felton on October 12, 1962, 50 years to the day of it rolling off the factory floor. The engine was rebuilt over the winter, and by March of 1963, the locomotive was named Dixiana and was ready for service as Roaring Camp in Big Trees No. 1. Dixiana is seen operating at Roaring Camp in 1964. Note during this time the engine is lacking air brakes and a bell. Also, the open cars have names on the sides, as can be seen with car 104 being named Mendocino. Originally, all of the cars at Roaring Camp were going to be named after counties, and cars number 101 to 104 were named Santa Cruz, Monterey, Sonoma, and Mendocino. One of the base supports for the new water tower under construction is seen next to the Felton Depot. of the original Roaring Camp rolling stock and associated parts for the open cars came from the SP narrow gauge and the west side, and this flat car from the SP narrow gauge is an example of one of those early types of equipment. Dixiana is passing the side of the present day mill pond. In October 1963, Norman Clark was able to acquire his second locomotive for Roaring Camp in the form of Westside No. 3, the former mill switcher in Tuolumne for the Westside Lumber Company. This locomotive was originally built as narrow gauge and was converted to standard gauge in 1947 and is a two-truck Heisler built by the Stearns Manufacturing Company in 1899. And here we see the engine crossing the Sierra Railroad's turnback trestle heading for the Tuolumne Mill Complex with a flat car and a box car.
These sequences were taken in 1963, two years after the narrow gauge operation had stopped. And by this time, West Side No. 3 had achieved some fame as one of the last steam locomotives in revenue operation in California, helping switch out cars to ship out finished lumber on hand from the Tuolumne Mill. The number three is seen in front of the Sierra Railroad's Tuolumne Depot. The number three is seen crossing the Turnback Trestle again with more finished lumber bound for the interchange with the Sierra Railroad. Note the engineer sitting in the window seat of the engine. This was installed to assist in helping the crew see around standard gauge rolling stock and originally came from Sierra Railroad Heisler number no. 9. Roaring Camp was not the first time that the little Heisler locomotive would pull passengers. As seen here in November of 1960, the locomotive is turning a consist on the Y at Tuolumne for the Sierra Railroad. Sierra Railroad number 3 and 28 are seen waiting on the siding at Tuolumne while the west side number 3 finishes its switching chores with the fan trip consist. When Norman Clark acquired Heisler No. 3, he also acquired the narrow gauge trucks of Sister Heisler No. 4, and the engine arrived at Roaring Camp in October of 1963. Shortly after the engine arrived at Roaring Camp, it was lettered as engine number one for the Big Trees Flume and Lumber Company. It was one of the dreams of Norman Clark to have a flume ride going from somewhere up on Bear Mountain down back to Roaring Camp, simulating the old flumes that were very common at log camps in the turn of the century. Here we see Big Trees Flume and Lumber Company number one with two of the open cars above Grizzly Flats.
The line up to the top at Roaring Camp was not complete by 1964, however it was still a very wonderful place to see steam locomotives in operation, and it was one of the few places to do so in the region, as operational steam on a revenue earning basis was no longer commonplace on America's railroads. Shortly after its arrival to Roaring Camp, the Heisler was fitted with a hooter whistle which has become a familiar voice in the Santa Cruz Mountains. The Heisler was one of the most well-engineered designs of all the logging locomotives. By 1965, the Dixiana had air brakes fitted as well as a bell. In a spectacular display of geared steam, Big Trees Flume and Lumber Number no. 1 and Roaring Camp and Big Trees Number no. 1 Doublehead. During this time period in the mid-1960s, Roaring Camp was about the only place that you could see double-headed steam locomotives working in tense mountain grades. Big Trees Flumen Lumber No. 1 in the Dixiana tie up for the day at Felton. The Heisler is seen switching former Westside Lumber Company equipment, which includes Caboose No. 7. This equipment is now part of the collection of the Southern California Railroad Museum in Paris, California. Heisler is seen coming back down grade into Roaring Camp before boarding the train and being shoved back up grade.
1966, the oldest operable steam locomotive joined the fleet at Roaring Camp in the form of Kahuku Plantation Company No. 1, an 042 saddle tank engine that was built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1890. As the Heisler comes back into the depot, we can see the addition of a star spot plate instead of the number one. The Heisler adds an extra car to its consist before returning to the depot at Roaring Camp. Also completed in 1966 was one of the most fabulous and beautiful structural landmarks on the original alignment to Bear Mountain, the over-under corkscrew trestle. Another important part of Norman Clark's vision, especially now that he had geared engines, was making them work and constructing his railroad not only so that they would work, but be doing it all in a very spectacular fashion. Here we see the last of the spikes being driven, completing the corkscrew. The Heisler departs the depot at Roaring Camp. After the Kahuku Plantation Company No. 1 was retired around 1950, it became part of a display in the Sutro Baths Museum in San Francisco that eventually went under. When Norman Clark purchased it, it became Roaring Camp in Big Trees No. 3 and is seen here wearing the Heisler's original West Side spot plate. We are on board the train for our first trip into the woods and over Indian Creek. Note the now completed water tower at the right. We approach the bottom end of the corkscrew and go up and around for the first time.
By the summer of 1966, things were looking more formal at Roaring Camp, with number three in a full paint job and named Kahuku, and regular trains of open cars plus caboose going into the woods and up to Bear Mountain, with two different types of geared locomotives at the head end. Let's hang out at the corkscrew for a while and watch the Dixiana negotiating the trestle up and down grade. The Kahuku is seen with two open cars between Felton and Roaring Camp. In this vicinity, there is now a paved pathway and a pond just south of the location of the present day parking lot. The Dixiana arrives with another regular Bear Mountain run. Note the wooden pilot, which is no longer on the locomotive.
By the late 1960s, the if you will build it, they will come mentality was surely working out for Roaring Camp. As trains continued to run up to Bear Mountain and the operation continued to formalize even further. As the Dixiana arrives back into Roaring Camp, we can see that there's work being done on the Heisler. By the time these sequences were taken in 1967, the worn out engine had gone through a complete mechanical overhaul. The Kahuku continues with its duties, shuttling passengers to and from the depot. The crew cleans sediment and minerals from the mud ring as they test out the Heisler. The smoke box has been painted and the star spot plate has been reapplied as the Heisler departs the depot at Roaring Camp. Two GP9s are seen leading an SP sand train toward Olympia as the Heisler arrives back at the depot in Roaring Camp. We take another trip into the woods and up to Bear Mountain, this time behind the Heisler. The train rolls over the trestle at Spring Canyon. Though the hooter whistle never was on the Heisler when it was in service on the west side, it was put on the engine shortly after it arrived into Roaring Camp in late 1963, and for the next three decades it became the voice of the engine and a familiar sound associated with steam trains in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Heisler is seen going back into the woods with another load of passengers, before being seen returning back down the grade and blowing down the boiler.
crew fills the engine with water after arriving back at the depot. Of course, the show never stops for Dick Sienna as she's seen returning back into Roaring Camp, with a nice panoramic view of the area as it looked in 1968. The newly completed engine house is visible at the right. Up until this time, the engines had to be stored outside. We arrive into Felton as seen from on board the train. On June 27, 1976, a fire in the forest near Roaring Camp destroyed the original alignment with the corkscrew trestle. This necessitated the construction of a switchback at Spring Canyon, which was completed in October of 1976 and serves as the current route up to Bear Mountain to this day. In 1986, another logging locomotive joined the operating fleet of engines at Roaring Camp in the form of former Westside Lumber Company Shea No. 7, which upon its arrival was named Sonora. In 1985, the very first standard gauge Roaring Camp operation operated to Rincon as part of the Santa Cruz Big Trees and Pacific Railway, running trains from Roaring Camp into Santa Cruz, which finally occurred in 1986. Unfortunately, Norman Clark would not live to see trains into Santa Cruz as he passed away in 1985 at the age of 50. However, the legacy that he has left in Roaring Camp still lives on to this day, with the Dixiana, the Heisler, now engine number two and named Tuolumne, and the Kahuku all operational in the year 2023. And folks can still hop a train into Santa Cruz on the Santa Cruz Big Trees in Pacific. Today's Roaring Camp Railroads is an institution in the Santa Cruz Mountains of Northern California, and the images it recreates of California history and the development of the West will continue to create long-lasting impressions on future generations for years to come. 